Hello, I'm Liam and we are playing Four Against Darkness. We have returned to the Divigna Marcia's ship and made an accounting of our exploration of the sneering sewers. We've knocked 554 gold pieces uh, off of our debt. We're down to 3,478 now. Um, we turn in the eternal food cauldron we seized from defeating the Etten adventurer in our faction. Goes up to four. Um, we get an XP roll. Uh, let's see if Throck can get from level four to level five. So he's got to roll a five or a six. He does it. <laughs> Finally. Throck, uh, Throck makes his XP roll. Throck is now level five. Excellent. I've already updated his character sheet. Uh, all that changes for Throck is um, level goes to 5, his health went to 12. I was going to level him up <laughs> one way or another, uh, and that worked. So, excellent. Uh, what else? Let's see. While that's going on, the quartermaster notices Throck moving gingerly, and he looks at his shoes. Uncomfortable, he says. I says Throck, but great for kicking things. The quartermaster nods. He says, strange, though, to see a barbarian in magic shoes. <laughs> Throck's eyes go wide. What? He stares at the shoes for a moment and then rips them off his feet and throws them in the ocean. Jim giggles in his unsettling, maniacal way. Elric Looks resigned. Blesk puts her hand on her forehead. You could have given them to Jim or Elric or me, she says. You needn't have chucked them overboard. Throck just slumps and rubs his aching feet. All right, says the quartermaster. You're going to need some extra training for where you're headed next. And he adds 500 gold each to their debt. Uh, that'll get us into the abyss. So we're going to add... Plus 2,000 here. And we're not done yet. <laughs> they spend the next week studying uh, vampires and lycanthropes and the effects of insanity that can be incurred in the deepest dungeons. And they learn about something called the Dark Plague and they study tactics for dealing with multiple groups of enemies and fighting simultaneous bosses. They also use the time to make use of some professional services. Jim visits a silversmith and has his two-handed sword silvered for 40 gold pieces. His two-handed enchanted sword he got from a lady in white is now also silver, so that can hit wraiths and uh, more effective versus werewolves and such. Elric has a shield maker reinforce his shield of warning for eight gold pieces, and uh, it's now unbreakable. And Elric will be able to re-roll his first failed defense roll, if I, if I remember. Uh, and we can visit one more professional. We can visit three between adventures, uh, according to the rules of the abyss. So let's see. Uh, let's see who's going to visit who. I'm going to roll four-sided die. Three, one, two, three. Blesk, who does she visit? Let's roll a... I've got a table of them here. Three. She visits a fortune teller. This is fun. Um, fortune teller. For 15 gold pieces. Um, the character visits a fortune teller who gives Blesk a palm or tarot reading. Roll 2d8 and choose one of the results. Eight. We'll take the eight, please. <laughs> um, during your next adventure, the character may use the number rolled on that die as the result of any one roll during the game. Uh, there you go. So Blesk gets an eight on an eight-sided die. Uh, we'll just store this over here somewhere and try again to remember. That cost us another 15 gold. So, let's see, it was 40 for Jim's silver sword, it was 15 for uh, the shield maker, no, 8 for the shield maker, that's 48 
plus 15 is 63 gold if I did that right so that adds another 63 gold to their uh, to their debt but we're also gonna we're not <laughs> we're not done yet we're gonna hire a lantern bearer uh, let me hide this so you can see we're gonna hire a lantern bearer and a spear carrier the lantern barrier does is advertise they carry the lantern so blesk is no longer our lantern carrier if something happens to the lantern bearer she can pick up the lantern but uh but that'll free her up a little bit and the spear carrier um will carry throx extra two-handed hammer so that he doesn't suffer a defense penalty carrying two of those two-handed hammers one is a silver two-handed hammer and one is a masterwork so everybody now has silvered weapons or an option to use one the other advantage of the spear carrier is that when throck needs to switch his weapon uh, it, it won't cost a turn so that's nice um what am i forgetting oh i've added them here lantern bearer he's got two life they both have two life both of these retainers and they're both wearing light armor they get so they get plus one on their defense rolls they're level zero so they could be attacked um we're gonna try to keep them out of harm's way i've got them right in the middle of the marching order and uh in a room they'll just fall back and uh, try to stay behind everybody um that's my plan there and now blesk can have a sling in one hand and a spell in the other uh and until unless the lantern bearer goes down okay so we've done all of that when the week is up the quartermaster says i owe you two scrolls for the cauldron he opens the scroll closet and pulls out one scroll um that's gonna be in our core rules roll d6 on the scroll table six another protect scroll got quite a few of these blesk uh, so we'll add that to blesk she now has a scroll of protect and um and then uh he goes to a chest the quartermaster does wrapped in chains and padlocked it takes him a while but eventually he retrieves a scroll from it as well this scroll is older looking black and to throck it looks like it's smoking it's an abyss scroll don't get used to this says the quartermaster this is a one-time deal but brunhilde thought you might need one where you're headed so here we've got a table of abyss scrolls or at least of expert spells somewhere here there it is roll a d6 on this four mass teleport <laughs> that doesn't bode well if she thinks we need a mass teleport that's a tricky spell it's powerful but um let's look it up what it does is uh i'm looking at my notes here expert spells mass teleport teleport yourself and others to any previously visited location any previously visited location that's pretty nice it doesn't have to just be the the eggs or the entrance of the dungeon like an escape scroll but it damages the caster by the number of others that are teleported so uh if blessed were to cast it on the whole party she would take three damage she only has nine so that's a third of her health <laughs> um and then any party members left behind are killed by the dangers of the dungeon so um she can uh learn this so she's gonna go ahead and prepare that i think i've changed how i interpret how spells work with elves the way it reads is you can prepare three spells uh two, two and then three once you level up um, and it never seems to go above three so i think what we can do with the elf is prepare three spells and then she can cast 
her level of spells per adventure. She's level five, so she can cast five spells and of any of these three in any combination. That's the way I'm I'm reading it now. So originally I interpreted it more like uh, how the the wizard works, but that's a that's a little different, I think. So that's what we're doing. Um, Okay, so we've got, she's got mass teleport in her repertoire now. As a reward for completing the patron quest. Okay. What else? Let's see. I think that's all the preparation we need to do. Let's find out, how am I going to remember this? Um, we're going to write that down on our sheet as well. Store, because that's a really powerful. Mass teleport. Uh, I'm going to write over here, stored, D8. Okay. Um, let's see where we're headed. If I pull up, here's our good old uh, dependable name table from GM's Miscellany. We'll roll a D8. Five, the complex of descriptor. So we need to roll a complex name and a descriptor. Let's roll a D100 here for the complex. Uh, four. Zero, four. Barrow, excellent. <laughs> um, descriptor. Another D100. 39. Crumbling, decaying, moldering, decomposing, disintegrating. The crumbling barrow. The moldering barrow. There we go. All right, we're headed to the moldering barrow. The moldering barrow. And what are we after we'll go to twisted hordes here uh, that's a d100 again i think yeah zero eight veracin lion skin wow this is the skin of a dark maned veracin lion any character wearing this skin gets a permanent plus one to any save roll based on bravery, including all saves to resist fear, terror, and other similar effects based on personal bravery or morale. You can give it to an NPC hireling uh, for plus one morale. Lion men characters. That sounds cool. Will refuse to adventure alongside characters wearing such a skin. And any encounter with lion men will get a plus two to their reaction roll, which means they're more likely to fight. Uh, no character may wear more than a single lion skin. That makes sense. Okay, so we are after a veracin lion skin. And who has it? I think we're going to go ahead and just use the... Uh, normal boss table and four against the abyss we're layering a lot of new stuff here with the abyss rules so where i was using fiendish foes and twisted final fights and those other books um i think we're just going to go with the core rules in the abyss uh we'll try to play things as normal as possible while we learn the abyss rules um so uh here's our boss table um, and we're gonna roll the three tentacle brain. <laughs> wow. Okay. Um, our final boss is going to be a tentacle brain. Um, <laughs> who has possession of a veracin lion skin tentacled brain. Level nine, eight life. So it'll have it'll have ten. It'll be level ten and nine life. I think, if I recall the final boss rules correctly, 
Treasure plus one. The tentacled brain is hard to hit because it floats in the air. What is a tentacled brain doing <laughs> with a veracin lion skin? Um, just hoarding it, I suppose. It likes to... <laughs> Maybe it's a blanket. Um, it is only level six if attacked with ranged weapons or spells. The brain does not attack, but each turn the brain is killed or flees before they have a chance to attack. All characters must save versus five or take one wound and one madness. Wizards do better against this save. Okay, there's our final boss. We are looking for a tentacle brain who is in possession of a veracin lion skin within the moldering barrow. All right. Excellent. Let's head into the abyss. Okay, here we go. Let's see what our starting room is. That's a two. It's going to look like this. We've got a diagonal entry. Leading to a door. And looks like five. One, two, three, four, five. And up three. Over here is up another three. We've got a door over here. And there it is. This is three. Right? Yep. Like that. We've got a door here. Another hallway, and, okay, I think I did that right. There's our entry, room one. Let's see, am I going to continue to do the locked doors thing in the abyss? I think so, I like it. So, let's, uh, let's check all these doors first. I'm going to assume we open this door, um, we're on the outside of the moldering barrow. Uh, well, I, yeah, let's, should we, okay, the next question is, should we modify the locked door rules? Um, because we're going to have a pretty easy time bashing these down, I think. Um, well, let's see if any of them are locked. So, one or, one or two, this one is locked with a level, what, four? So, put that in pencil. And this door is not locked, um, so I'm going to color them in if they're open. And, um, yeah, okay, let's head. Should we head through the door, head north, or try the locked door? Uh, one to two will go northwest. So six, <laughs> we're heading east through the uh, open door. 44, that's going to look like, where's 44 up here, it's like, uh, I've turned that on its side, maybe we'll, oh boy, that's a mess to put over here, we'll move the where the door is, so we go over to, uh, down to, over three, up to, this is where the door would be, um, but we're going to move it. Uh, did I do that right? Over two, down two, three, up two, in one. So like that. I'm missing something here. Over two, up like that. Good enough. And uh, we'll put the door up here. So this is room two, and before I forget, let's see if that um, see if that door is locked. It is locked. Uh, to I'm rolling for sturdiness here. Uh, we don't have a rogue. I would normally roll. You would normally roll for a lock difficulty, um, but we don't have a rogue, so we'll be bashing it in. So we need to get three if we stick with the normal one to six rules. Okay. Um, We'll see how that plays out. Room two. Okay, contents. We are on the abyss chart. We're going to roll two six-sided die. We get a five, and it's a room. It's empty. 
Roll d6 on the special feature table. Special feature table. The abyss. Uh, where is it? Abyss. Goodness, here we go. Abyss. Special feature. Three. Room of horrors. Oh dear. Okay, the room is a torture chamber, an abattoir, or another source of unbearable evil. All characters gain one madness point and must save versus level 6 fear or be at minus 1 on all attack rolls until a blessing spell is cast. One spell per affected characters. Oh, wow. Okay, one entry. Two, Room of Horrors. Okay. All characters gain one madness point. We have a little madness box here. The deal with madness is if it accumulates above, uh, it's either, I think it's above, might be equal to or above your level. Uh, you disappear into the bowels of the dungeon, never to be seen again. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, and we're very first room in our very first abyss dungeon. We are we suffer a point of madness. Um, okay, and now we must save versus level six fear. Okay. Yeah, in the abyss, uh, use a D eight for everything, including uh, save rolls. So. We'll roll a seven. Excellent. He makes it. Um, and I think, yeah, D8s explode on a seven or eight. So that would have exploded if we needed it to. Throck makes his save versus fear. Elric does not. Blesk does. And Jim does not. So Elric and Jim. Uh, back to the special feature table. Special feature table. Here it is. Must save versus level 6 fear or be at minus 1 on all attack rolls until a blessing spell is cast. So, minus 1 on all attack. I guess we'll go ahead and use it. Um, Elric uh, can cast 3 blesses. This would use up 2 of his blesses. Minus 1. Do we risk it? Um, we can cast these later, I think. I don't... Because here's the deal. There are worse things <laughs> that we may want to use Bless to overcome. So I think we're going to go ahead and just take the minus one attack. And I'll write that down here. Oh, this is a, this is going to be a lot to keep track of, you guys. Um, minus one to attack Jim and Elric. Okay. All right. Is there a better way to remember that? <laughs> you put it on the sheet over by the attack. Let's do that as well. I'll uh, put in a little asterisk here. Elric and Jim. Okay. Good luck remembering. All right. Let's see. That's the room of horrors. <laughs> horrors done. I guess we'll head north. We want to open this door. Um, warriors and barbarians add their level to this roll. He easily opens the door. Uh, my thinking is it's going to be super easy to because their level is five. Um, so if we add five, the only way they'd fail is if they roll a natural one. Hmm. We could up the sturdiness of the doors. Um, maybe we'll do that. Maybe we'll roll an eight-sided die for sturdiness for doors. In any case, this one is open. And what is on the other side? Twenty-three. It's gonna look like a long haul. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And a room 
that goes over by two, and then up by three, over by one, up by three and over. This is room three. We've got a door up here. Let's do what we just said. We'll roll an eight-sided die. Eight. <laughs> uh, sturdiness of eight. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Well, we asked for it. Um, flow chart. What is in this room? Seven. Minions table. Roll d6 on the minions table. If win, roll on the treasure table. Now, there's a note. I should make a note about minions. We'd carry over six minions from our previous adventure, but in the abyss, you only have to accumulate five minions before you do an XP roll. So I've halved that number. We had six, now we have three, two more minion encounters, and this is one, and we'll get an XP roll. So three, this is going to be minion encounter number four. Hope that made sense. And we'll roll in our first abyss minions. Here we go. Minions. Roll a d6. Three. We've got two d6 minus one dark dwarves. Nine, eight dark dwarves. Dark dwarves. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, level eight. And two treasure rolls. If a sleep spell is cast at a group of dark dwarves, there's a two in six chance that they are immune to it thanks to the mind altering mushrooms they eat. Roll once for all dwarves when a sleep spell is cast. They will all be immune or not. Uh, reaction, flee, bribe, or fight. Okay, well, here we go. We are... We'll hide this for now. Reorganize these guys. Throck, Elric, Blesk, and Jim. Now, my new rule is that the folks in the back have ranged weapons equipped. Um, and uh, so they can either use those right off the bat or they'll have to take a turn to switch. But in any case, we'll have Throck go. He's going to roll a d8. Uh, he's got a Masterwork two-handed hammer. When we use the d6, Masterwork explodes on a 5 or 6. Uh, when we're using D8, it explodes on a 6, 7, or 8. So Throck and gets a 5. His attack is plus 5. That's a 10. So he does take out one of these Dark Dwarves. Elric. He's got a minus 1 to his attack. I'm surprised I remembered that. <laughs> um, okay. And he is going to attack. Rolls D8, 3. His attack is plus two. That's a five. That's not enough. Okay. Uh, Blesk. She has her sling out and a weapon ready. A uh, spell. Um, she, so, yeah, she has her sling and she can cast a spell. <laughs> she can cast mass teleport. She's just like, we're out of here. I don't like this already. Um, let's see. I, I hate to take a turn to switch already, but... Uh, it's now or never. Should we try the sleep spell? What did it say? Two and six chance that they're immune. So that's no good. So I think she's, yeah, she's going to take a turn to switch to her sword. Yeah. I think that's what she'll do. And Jim um, is going to, he should, she could shoot with his bow. Uh, I think he's going to take a turn to switch to his sword as well. His sword is just so much better. He rolls with advantage. Gets more attack. Okay. That's done. Um, not... This is scary. Because <laughs> there's seven of them. So, and we have four. Um, so, everybody's going to get attacked twice. Except... Blesk. Okay. So, two attacks on Throck. One, that's not enough. The first dwarf misses Throck. Am I doing this right? Rule an A for them. Explodes. Oh, 
we're rolling for Throck, right? So his first, his one failed. His defense failed on his first one. So he takes one point of damage, and now his eight definitely succeeds. That would actually explode, but... Um, so he takes one point of damage. Uh, we'll do pencil. And now Elric. Two, that's not enough to defend. Second defense roll is five, plus three is eight. He does, uh, this is the rule I forgot consistently before this. Defense rolls need to exceed, and that's not enough. So he needed a nine or better. So Elric takes two points of damage. Blesk gets attacked by one. She rolled an eight. She succeeds. Um... Needs to roll a nine, right? But eight explodes. So whatever I roll in the next roll, she would if she would defend. Um, and now Jim does not. Let's see, his defense is two plus two. So that's he takes one point of damage, two points of damage. Yeah, uh, this is feeling quite a bit more deadly already. All right, it's our turn. Uh, Throck. Do we use his rage already? No, let's let's save it. Eight, oh, excellent. That explodes. That explodes. Fifteen, uh, twenty, um, plus five, twenty-five. He takes out three dark doors with one attack. That's outstanding. Okay, Elric. Six does not explode, but he has plus two attack is eight, so Elric takes out one of these dark. Oh, no, he's got a minus one. Six plus his attack of two is eight, minus one is seven. He does not take it out. I can't believe I remembered that twice in a row. Um, okay. Uh, Blesk, again, we're not going to do a spell here. Six, um... Plus her attack is plus six, is 12. So she takes out one of the dark dwarves. They do a morale roll. I believe morale is still with a with a uh, d6. And on a one to three, they flee. Uh, yeah, I don't see any new uh, rules for that uh, morale check table. So the, dwar the dark dwarves flee. Fled. And Jim didn't even get a chance to use his sword. Uh, okay. Um, let's see. Two treasure rolls. Abyss treasure table. So roll twice on this, this guy. One and two. <laughs> uh, D8 times five gold pieces. Uh, D8. Three times five, 15 gold pieces. And 46 times 10 gold pieces or one item from the useful stuff table. Here we go. And we get to choose. Rope, lantern, or anyone slashing or crushing weapon. That's no good. You know, I forgot all about these guys. I forgot all about our spear carrier and our lantern barrier. bearer. They should have been attacked um, because there was no... No, I, I mean, if I was just rolling random, I would, but my plan is to have them move behind our character. I think that, I think that's fair. I think I, um, they can move to safety. I, some, I recall um, something in the core rules about an example where they, a party had a wizard do that. That's what I'll do for now. Um, they're just basically going to... Stay protected. They can still get damaged by things like traps or uh, dragon's breath, area of effect, that kind of stuff. But normal combat, I'm going to treat them as just basically safe unless something goes wrong. Um, I guess they should have rolled. They should have rolled for madness. <laughs> they only have two. They're level zero if they get one madness. Is that how that works? <laughs> um, wow, level zero. That can't be right because if... Uh, huh. A 
Okay, I'm gonna pause and check that. Well, okay, I'm gonna have to look that up another time. Let's see. I'm gonna write that down as an outstanding question. Retainers and madness. And for now, I, I feel like they, well, no, I mean, they would have entered that room and immediately just run off screaming <laughs> into the dungeon. Um, I'm going to say no, because that would make them just totally useless in the abyss. Uh, all right, so where were we? Um, useful stuff table. Okay. D6 Blessed Stakes counts as magic we weapons against vampires only. Wolvesbane, this dried herb. Oh, let me show this so you guys can see it. Wolvesbane, this dried herb, may be thrown against a were creature. Silver weapon. We, we're all silver now. Uh, blessed Horseshoe. The character carrying this horseshoe in his pocket may re roll any one die roll, then the talisman loses its powers. Barbarians are allowed to use this item. Wow. An unused blessed horseshoe can be sold for 10 gold pieces. Um, uh, okay, D3 loaves of elven bread. Any character eating a loaf heals one life or removes the dark plague. Elves eating them heal three life. Okay, yeah. Um... Among these dark dwarves, we find D3 loaves of elven bread. Let's see. One. <laughs> Perfect. All right. And um, I'm just going to write that down. I'm keeping track of special items that we have on their own list. Um, one loaf, elven bread. And my reasoning here is when stuff is spread out amongst these character sheets... I forget it exists. <laughs> um, so this is for a... I wrote down what book and page number it comes from so I can look back at it. And then what will happen is... The only the only issue with the rules here is we're, you want to keep track of who is holding something because if they get turned to stone um, or they run off mad into the dungeon, that item that they're holding would go with them. So what I'll do if and when that happens... We'll just roll. There's four things here. I'll roll a random, I'll roll a four-sided die and see which one of these things that person was carrying and that gets turned to stone or runs off into the abyss. Uh, that's my plan, just to sort of make that less cumbersome to keep track of. Okay, um, excellent. Elven bread. Character may benefit from eating elven bread only once per game. Even elven bread is rare outside of elven communities, and the loaves may be sold for ten gold pieces. Elven bread never goes bad, so you can keep it for future adventures. Elven bread is not considered a magic item, so barbarians may use it. So basically, removes dark plague or heals one life or three if blessed were to eat it. Excellent. Okay, that is room three. Let's see if we can bash down this door. So, we're going to roll an eight-sided die and add our level. Jim, four plus five, easily bashes open this door. And what is on the other side? Where did my other die go? Here it is. Forty-one. Forty-one. We've got a hallway up a little bit, and then got a little three by three room, basically. And a little jog like this with a door at the top. Roll to see what that door is. Is it, uh, oops, is it locked? No. Excellent. Okay, we'll color it in so you remember. It's open. This is room four. We'll go to the abyss chart and roll 2d6. Seven. Roll d6 minions table. Excellent. 
more minions. This is Minion Encounter 5. When we defeat this, we get an XP roll. Okay, um, Minions Table. Minions. Roll D6. 6 D6 plus 4 Chaos Fanatics. 5. 9 Chaos Fanatics. Chaos Fanatics. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Our Chaos Fanatics are level 7. Normal Treasure Morale plus 1. They have a 2 in 6 chance of having a Dark Lord of Zictul from the Abyss boss table as a leader. Oh dear. Okay. <laughs> and they do. Oh, alright. Um, uh, wow. Okay, so what? here's the deal. He's a boss. If you defeat a boss in the abyss, you get two XP rolls. This is our fifth minion encounter. If we defeat this encounter, the boss and the minions, we get three XP rolls. <laughs> uh, but there is a lot standing between that and us. So what is it? Dark Lord of... What we'll call it? D Lord of Zik tool huh. from the abyss boss table as a leader boss table here he is dark lord of zik tool level 11 goodness one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven um oh sorry that's his level Bosses are different. Level 11, 12 life. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And he's level 11, 4 attacks. <laughs> Treasure plus 1. The Dark Lord's huge cleaver automatically destroy a character's shield if a shield-equipped character rolls a 1 on his defense roll. But uh, Elric's are only one with a shield, and uh, we just got it made unbreakable by the shield maker. So sweet. Um, and each hit from the Dark Lord inflicts 2 damage. 2 damage each. He can potentially do... <laughs> Eight damage every round. All right. Um, I think I think we've gone long enough for this session. <laughs> so uh, when we come back, when we play again, we'll uh, take on these chaos fanatics and the dark loot of Zik, dark lord of Zik tool. It'll be our first time um, dealing with a leader and minions at the same time. So we'll play again soon. Until then, friends. Keep your lanterns lit and your hearts warm. Thanks for watching.